Hello and welcome again to our weekly video message from the Royal Black Institution. Thank you for continuing to watch our weekly messages and I trust that you're being encouraged by them. I'm not sure if during this pandemic you find your faith and hope for the future being tested. For me, I found the past week very difficult as I've had to come to terms with the death of my dear friend and Sir Knight, Alan Goody from Scotland. Within our institution, Sir Knight Goody was an Imperial Deputy Grand Master and a past Assistant Sovereign Grand Master as well as past Grand Master of the Grand Black Chapter of Scotland. However, it did not matter what title Alan held, he was always prepared to help at any level throughout our institution. Indeed, it was in the Royal Black Institution trip to Chuoko Hospital in Uganda that Tonight Goody proved to be a real encouragement to those that travelled with him. From taking Bible study each morning to encouraging some of his fellow Tonights, especially the younger members who were feeling lonely and missing their home comforts, or to helping to repair existing electrics in the maternity ward, Alan was to be found encouraging all those around him. So I counted it an honour and a privilege to be asked to attend his funeral and to read God's word to those that would be present as well as those watching online. In typical of his preparedness, Alan had selected the passage of scripture that I was to read. But in typical Alan fashion, the scripture reading that he had left for me to read was the great message of hope that we find in the book of Revelation. A great book about our eternal hope for those like Alan that have that relationship with Christ as their saviour. In the book of Revelation, Jesus gives John a message for the seven churches in Asia, now modern day Turkey. Of the seven, one is about to undergo intense suffering, Revelation 2 to 10. One has kept his word, Revelation 3, 8. And the other five are faltering in their loyalty to Jesus. The Lord warns the churches that he is the righteous judge and he knows their deeds. He calls the faltering churches to repentance and makes even the seven encouraging promises to those who overcome. Then John is whisked into heaven to witness what must take place after these things. Revelation 4 and 1. So begins a long series of prophetic visions for the church, with the last one being about a new heaven and a new earth that would appear, where God and the Lamb dwell with people in harmony forever. It was the first seven verses of chapter 21 that Alan had decreed in his planning that I should read, and I want to share them with you now. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God of heaven, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We're used to hearing about heaven as a happy place where we go when we die. But listen to the hope, the eternal hope that is there in those words contained in verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. So the challenge today is, do you have that certainty? <clears throat> Can you say today, as Alan did, I don't feel angry about my situation. Not at all. I feel blessed. 
or is your faith and hope for your eternity in turmoil? You see, friends, not only had Alan made preparations for his funeral service, but he had made the most important preparations of all. He had made his preparations for eternity. As he told our media consultant, as he chatted with him a few weeks before his untimely death, I now have a relationship with Christ, my Saviour, and I don't think you need anything more. He had made that important decision to follow Christ that enabled him to say, I don't feel angry about my situation, not at all. I feel blessed. Please remember that good message of Revelation, that one day God will be the judge of our lives and that he will determine our eternal destiny. I trust and pray that for you today, like Alan, you will have made your preparations, not for your funeral, although that can be a great help to your loved ones, but that you will take the time to make your preparations for eternity. I know that one day, through the same commitment and ongoing faith that Alan had, I will see him once again around the throne of one who said, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So now, what about you? Will you be there? May God bless you as you consider these things.